All right, another video coming at you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Barshem, Yahweh Shai, Barshem Raka Kodash. All praises and glories definitely do, especially in the times we're living in. So this video will be called Yahweh Shai prophesied of his own return. Yahweh Shai prophesied of his own return. And of course, this was uh, inspired by the book of Matthew, the 26th chapter, in particular, the 64th verse. But before I read it, I want to build up to it. This is during the time when Yahweh Shai was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he was led to this judgment hall judgment hall where he was put on trial and you had all these chief priests these scribes these lawyers many of them who hated the Shai and wanted to see him be put to death and um it's a statement that Shai made to them prophesying of his own return now keep in mind those same spirits that were back there chastising Yahweh Shai and insulting him and physically and verbally abusing him because they hated him and they were jealous of him. Those same spirits are back today in their regeneration, their reincarnation. Because regeneration and reincarnation is very much taught in the Bible. Uh, regeneration is reincarnation. And reincarnation is regeneration. We're always coming back. And the scriptures tell us we come back every three and four generations through our family line. Mm. You know, the, the, body, the body dies, but the spirit never dies the spirit is pure energy and that keeps coming back in a body okay as a matter of fact the word body when you go into the word is from the latin bodig which means home or abode so you have to ask yourself home for what an abode for what what is the body a home for an abode for for the spirit that's what it's a home for, the spirit. But eventually that home dies and it goes back to the earth where it was taken from. But the spirit never dies. The spirit is pure energy and that energy comes from the heavenly father. And when, when the body dies, that energy goes back to the heavenly father. And a new body is prepared for that spirit and, the, and that spirit is sent back to the earth to live in that body. It's called birth. Our parents create the house that our spirit will be living in. Okay? This is how it works. This is the book of uh, Ecclesiastes 12 and 7. It says, Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. That's the body, the house for the spirit. And the spirit shall return unto the heavenly father who gave it. There you go. So that spirit returns to the Heavenly Father. And when it's the time of birth, that spirit comes back to the earth and thus begins a new embodiment. Okay? Let's go to the book of Exodus 20 and 4. It says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, so this is a law that the Heavenly Father gave us, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers. Now we are regenerated through our fathers, 
because the, the man carries the seed. Whether it be male or female, the man carries the seed. The woman is just an incubator for the seed. So we come back through our fathers, our father's line. Hence, when you look up the word genealogy in the Latin, it literally means fathers. We are regenerated through our fathers. So when you talk about your forefathers, what people don't understand, especially the Edomites, is that they are their forefathers. So when we talk about our forefathers, we are our forefathers. We keep reincarnating. Uh, reincarnating, coming back and back over and over again. Okay? And and this phenomenon escapes a lot of people. They don't understand that. Alright? But we that know this knowledge, this truth, we understand that. So again, it says, I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So there you go. The third and fourth generation. That's around the time that spirit comes back. Okay. So those individuals that were back there. Those wicked chief priests, scribes and Pharisees. Who persecuted our Lord. Those same spirits are back today. In this generation. Alright. And they're back to receive their punishment from the Lord. Okay. Okay. Let's get the book of Job 14 and 14. Job 14 and 14. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. Now, if you look up the word uh, reincarnation, in the uh, etymology dictionary, it literally says a new embodiment. All right, and I'm going to show it to you. This is the uh, etymology dictionary. We're going to type in the word reincarnation. Okay, reincarnation. 1829. Now the word, when you break down the word, the word literally means back in the flesh. Re means back in the Latin. Re, back in. Carnate or carnation literally means flesh. Carnate. That's where you get the word canal from. Carne in the Italian. Carne, which means meat. Okay. Carne. So reincarnation literally means back in the flesh. So what goes back into, into the flesh? The spirit. When the appointed time comes from the Heavenly Father, the Heavenly Father gives the, the uh, order that that spirit goes back into that body. That's why you have certain people that are born blind and born deaf and born in, in, a, in a deformed body. Why? Because they're paying for what they did in their past life. That's their judgment. See, every time we die and we go back, first of all, when we die, we go before the throne of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son and the multitude of angels that are there to be judged for what we did in our bodies. Let's get that. See, people don't understand that. And then you're sent back to the earth to live out your judgment. This is why the Bible calls the earth the place of judgment. This is where we live out our judgment for what we did in our past life. Okay? The reason why we're catching all this hell is because of what we did in our past life. The reason why we're under these curses as Israelites is because of what we did in our past life. That's in the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, beginning at the 15th verse. That's the key to understanding these holy scriptures. Okay? Understanding that we've lived in the past. We were there in the past. This is 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. And um, the 10th verse, it says, For we must all, we must all appear before the judgment seat of the Howard Shire. And that happens every time we pass away. We go before the judgment hall of Yahweh Bar Shemi Howard Shire to be judged for what we did in the body while we was on the earth. That's what happens. 
for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Yahweh Shai. That every listen good. That and now Yahweh Shai is in charge. Even Yahweh Shai himself had to appear before the judgment seat of the Heavenly Father Yahweh. For what he did in his body when he was Adam, when he was Solomon. So now, as it is written, the Heavenly Father Yahweh has given Yahweh Shai all judgment. He has all power now. So he's the judge now. He's the underneath Yahweh, he's the top judge, Yahweh Shai. Okay? So like it says, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Yahweh Shai. That everyone, listen good, that everyone may receive the things done in his body. Receive what? Receive judgment, man. Receive judgment. Okay? Everything that we do, we receive judgment. Okay? <laughs> the so-called white man ain't the only one that can judge you. The so-called white man ain't the only one that have court that has a court system. The Most High himself has a court system. The Most High himself has a judgment system. Okay? <laughs> that everyone may receive the things done in his body. And when, and when you get that judgment, which you get it in the spirit world, or we, I should say, we get it in the spirit world, where do we serve this judgment? Well, we serve it in the spirit world? No, the spirit world is paradise. We serve the judgment on the planet Earth when we come back. That's how this thing works, man. Okay? That everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he have done. Receive what? His judgment. Whether it be good or bad. See? And that's why certain people, they perish. They may have lived a innocent, so-called innocent life, but then they receive a brutal death. Why? Because they're paying for what they did in their past life. That was their judgment. So whenever you see a person gets taken out brutally or something really bad happens to a person, that is judgment. That is the judgment of the Heavenly Father, all right, which his name is Yahweh and his only begotten son's name is Yahweh Shai. That is the judgment. The Most High is a power of judgment. There's a scripture where it says, every day he doth bring forth judgment. Let me see if I can find it. So this takes place every day. Every day people are being judged for what they did in their past life and what they did in this life. He bringeth forth judgment. Let me see if I can find it. He bringeth forth wasn't going to come up every day. He doth bring forth judgment. Okay, here it is right here. The book of Zephaniah, the third chapter, the fifth verse. So let's go there. Zephaniah, the third chapter, the fifth verse. So this is a powerful scripture right here. It gives you an insight to the machinations of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. The machine it gives you an insight to the machine. Zephaniah 3 and 5, it says, The just Lord is in the midst thereof. He will not do iniquity. Every, listen good, every morning doth he bring his judgment to light. See? Every morning doth he bring his judgment to light. Now, I just read that, let's, let's couple that scripture with what we just read here. 2 Corinthians 5 and 10, as King David said, uh, through thy precepts, I get understanding. So a good precept for 2 Corinthians 5 and 10 would be Zephaniah 3 and 5. This is how you understand the Bible. Okay, you have, as it is written, 
precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. See, we went here to Zephaniah, the third chapter. Now we're going back to 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. Here a little, there a little, right? It says, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Yahweh Shai, that everyone may receive the things done in his body. Judgment. According to that, he have done, whether it be good or bad. So if you have an individual, his past life, he was wicked as hell. Well, he comes into this life. Then he receives, he may, the Heavenly Father may decide to postpone his judgment. Like this, like case in point, the guy might be wicked as hell. The woman might, might have been wicked as hell in her past life. She dies a nice, peaceful death, you know, tranquil death. You know, maybe she dies in the sleep or, or you know. She dies a peaceful death. But then when she comes back now, or he comes back, he gets a brutal death. Does, what is that? That's judgment. All right? The person was wicked as hell in their past life, but they passed away peacefully in that past life. Now when they come back in this life, you know, they die a brutal death. Why? Because they're paying for what they did in their past life. Because there was, they were wicked as hell. I'm just giving you an example. All right, so you can understand what's being said. So going back to Zephaniah 3 and 5, the just Lord is in the midst thereof. He will not do iniquity. Every morning doth he bring his judgment to light. He faileth not. And the angels are the one that help to perform that judgment. That's their job. Because the angels are the one that, that, you know, sets up a person to be killed or whatever. The angels, they're the ones that guide us. They're the ones that protect us. But they're also the ones that administer judgment, whether it be peaceful or brutal. Okay? The angels of the Lord. Let's get that. The angels of the Lord does the Lord's bidding, man. This is the book of Psalm 103 and 20. It says, Bless the Lord. Ye his angels, and the word angel means messenger. Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength. Yeah, they never get tired. They're pure energy themselves, the angels. And they work for the Heavenly Father. Whether it be the righteous angels or the, or the wicked angels, they both work for the Heavenly Father. All right, the top righteous angel is Yahweh Shai. The top wicked angel is Satan. Okay? And what's heavy is Yahweh Shai is over Satan. Because remember, the Heavenly Father has given Yahweh power over all principalities. You know, the scriptures tell us this. The Heavenly Father have given Yahweh Shai power over all the spirits. All right? So, bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of the, hearkening unto the voice of his word. <laughs> Let's read that again. That's powerful, man. Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, <laughs> that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. So if the Heavenly Father demands a spirit come before him for judgment, guess what? That person is going out. The angel come down on the earth and they make it happen. Whether it be male or female, children, baby, it doesn't matter. That's why the scriptures call the Heavenly Father the King of Terrors, man. And that's why the Heavenly Father truly must be feared. His name is Yahweh, and his son's name is Yahweh Shai. I can't explain it to you any, any more clearer. Okay, so now, now that you understand, uh, you're, on, you're getting the insight into death and judgment and reincarnation and all that, Let's go back to the title of this video. You don't want to stray too far away. So let me start at the uh, 59th verse to build it up. Because Yahweh Shai prophesied of his return. And those same spirits that he prophesied to are back today in this generation. This is the same generation that was around when Yahweh Shai was on the planet Earth. Okay. So Matthew 26 and 59, now the chief priests and elders and all the council sought false witnesses against, or false witness against Yahweh Shai to put him to death. All those spirits are back today, man. 
those same false witnesses. Why are they back? They're back to receive their judgment. Remember Zephaniah 3 and 5, every morning the Lord doth bring forth what? His judgment. So when Yahweh comes back, right, and he puts to death all these people pursuant to Isaiah 66 and 15, let's get that. That'll be part of the Heavenly Father's judgment. There's a certain day coming, brothers, and you few sisters that watch these videos, there's a certain day coming when Yahweh Shai will invade this earth to bring forth judgment. And we're patiently, patiently, patiently waiting for that day. We salivate for that day. We dream for that day, man. I know me, I'm, I'm, I'm consumed by it, man. And I praise Yahweh Bashim Yahshai that I'm consumed by that day. I want to see, I want to see Yahweh Shai come back and bring judgment to this place, man. I think about it every day. Okay? And it's funny because when I first came into truth, I never used to really think about Yahweh Shai. I mean, you know, you know Yahweh Shai is coming back, but lately I've been just been consumed by it. Okay. Which I, I believe is a good thing. Certainly not a bad thing. <laughs> Isaiah 66 and 15, it says, For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind. So there's a certain day coming. When Yahweh Shai will invade this earth, all right? He will invade this earth and he will destroy this kingdom. He will destroy the so-called white man's power. Put it this way, after Yahweh Shai comes back on that day, the so-called white man will no longer be in power. His image will no longer be the top image on the planet earth. His image is going to be taken down because Yahweh Shai looks like a so-called black man. Let me put it to you this way. If Yahweh Shai was on the planet Earth right now, they would, call him a, they would call him a Negro. They would call him a nigger. That's what they would call him. Because that's what he looks like. He looks like a so-called black man. All right, dark skin and white woolly hair, okay? So he's coming to propagate his image on the planet Earth. His image is going to be the top image. All right? So... Again, Isaiah 66 and 15, For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind. Those are so-called UFOs, and the skies are going to be covered with them. And that's pursuant to Revelation 1 and 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. The hymn is talking about Yahweh Shai. This is where he comes to bring judgment. Behold, For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury, and his rebuke with flames of fire. And by the way, this prophecy is written in the Old Testament, yet this prophecy has not been fulfilled. You got these morons that talk about the Old Testament. They don't believe in the Old Testament. They only believe in the New Testament. As if the Old Testament is not valid. <laughs> well, here's a prophecy from the Old Testament that's extremely valid. It hasn't been fulfilled yet. The prophet Isaiah saw this in the vision going back to 700 BC, somewhere around there. And yet this prophecy has not been fulfilled. We're patiently waiting for this prophecy to be fulfilled. And you better believe all the prophecies will be fulfilled. As Yahweh Shai said, not one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass till all be fulfilled, as it is written. So this prophecy hasn't been fulfilled yet. Okay, let's read it again, Isaiah 66 and 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury. Judgment. Remember, Zephaniah 3 and 5. Every morning he doth bring forth judgment. Remember that? And those same spirits that I'm reading about, all right, back in Matthew that persecuted our Lord, those same spirits are back here today to receive their judgment. You understand now? To receive their judgment because there's a thing called reincarnation. In the beginning of the video, I explained how it works, reincarnation, how we keep coming back every generation. Anything that's generated keeps coming back over and over and over again. Do we not have generations of people? Well, guess what? Those people are not new. Okay, those people are not new. Those people are of the past. They keep being regenerated over and over and over again. Okay? Let me show you something real quick here. The book of Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. It says, the thing that have been 
is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. So we're not new. Matter of fact, if you know your Greek, the word for new is kainos, which means refreshed. Each time we're regenerated, reincarnated, if you will, we're refreshed. Let's go back to, uh, well, we'll go back to it. The etymology dictionary, the word for reincarnation, a repeated incarnation, which is a fact. I'll show it to you. But first, let me read this. The thing that have been is that which shall be and that which is done, which, which and that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun, see? We live under the sun, so we're not new. Is there anything where it may be said, see, this is new. It have been already of old time. So we were back there in the past, man, okay? Which was before us. Then it goes on to say, there's no remembrance of former things. So that's letting you know, it's talking about people. We don't remember our former life, our past life. Because the Heavenly Father blocks that, blocks that information from us so we can live this life. Which makes total sense. What if you found out you were brutally murdered in your past life? That would affect you in this life. So that information is blocked from you so you can live this life. It makes perfect sense. There is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. Unless... Unless the Heavenly Father triggers our remembrance. See, what's happening is we, we, we're being brought back to the past through our remembrance. The Heavenly Father have triggered our mind to remember. And that's why we're reading these scriptures because it brings us back to the past. All right. This Bible is a record of the past. Now, the word record, I always bring this out. The word record in the Italian is ricordati, which means to remember. Ricordati means to remember. Things are recorded so you can remember records, okay? Jude, the book of Jude, one and five, it says, I will therefore put you in remembrance. So Yahweh Bashim Yahusha is bringing our minds back to remember. Remember what we had in the past, because we were the people of the past. Jude 1 and 5, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this. How that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. So this is a remembrance. We're being brought to the past. As it is written, there you shall remember yourselves. That's in the Apocrypha. All right? So... Going back to Isaiah 66 and 15, again, for behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. Judgment. For by, for by, for by fire and by, the, by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. So these individuals, right, that persecuted the Lord, which we're about to read here, they're going to be part of the slain of the Lord. Okay, Heavenly Father, Yahweh is sending back his son, Yahweh Shai, to bring judgment. Now, before I read that, let's go back to the etymology, because I want to show you this, those of you that are new. Etymology online. Let's go back to the word reincarnation. Again, reincarnation, 1829, fact of repeated in incarnation, repeated. Over and over again, we're, ge we're regenerated into the planet Earth. Fact of repeated incarnation, state of being embodied anew. Now, what? wait a minute, what did Job say? What did Job say? Job... The 14th chapter, the 14th verse. If a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait. And he's waiting where? In the spirit world. 
right? Till my change come, till his new body comes. And when does that happen? When his parents have sex and they create the new body that his spirit is going to live in. While his spirit is in the spirit world, his spirit is sent back to the earth to live in that new body. Again, reincarnation, fact of repeated incarnation, state of being embodied anew from re back again, plus incarnation, meaning a new embodiment is from 1854. So it's a phenomenon that even Esau understands. All right? So it's a very real phenomenon. So now, let's go back to Matthew 26. So now you have all these, these chief priests, elders, scribes, lawyers, what have you. And uh, they sought false witness against Yahweh Shai to put him to death. Those same spirits are back. But found none. Yea, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. Those spirits are back. And they're going to receive judgment. Again, Isaiah 66. The slain of the Lord shall be many. Okay, remember that. At the last came two false witnesses and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of the Heavenly Father and to build it in three days. And he was talking about his body. He, was, he wasn't talking about the actual temple. And the high priest arose. That high priest is back. Whoever he is, he's back. And the high priest arose and said unto him, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witnesses against thee? But Yahweh I held his peace. And that was the fulfillment of, he was as a lamb. Isaiah spoke about that. Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, where it says, he was a, as a lamb brought before his sharers, a lamb that is dumb, meaning he didn't speak. Okay, he just held his peace. All right? Not, it, it wasn't worth for him to speak anyway. Nothing he would have said would have got him out of that predicament. You know, they, they were convinced that he was guilty and he had to die. We talk about Yahweh Shai. So nothing he would have said would have changed that. Plus it had to be, it was prophecy. He was said to be that lamb that was to be slaughtered, that was to be sacrificed for the nation of Israel, for our sins, beginning with his own and the rest of the nation of Israel. That's how the Heavenly Father Yahweh set it up. So of course he held his peace. What is he going to say? You know? And, and, and that is a comfort to us, man. To show, you know, show us how to be when our darkest hour comes, you know. There's a saying, you got, sometimes you have to accept things as they are, okay. That's, that's part of being uh, uh, mature and spiritually, accepting things as they are, man, okay. But Yahweh Shai held his peace, and the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God that thou tell us whether thou be the, the anointed, the son of the heavenly father. Yeah, how wish I spent his life telling them that. They didn't want to accept it. <laughs> so these individuals are demons, man. And all those spirits are back today and they're going to receive their just judgment, man. They are going to receive their just judgment. You better believe it, man. Yeah, how wish I say unto him, thou hast said, Nevertheless, now here it comes. It's the moment you've been waiting for. This is the title of the lesson right here. This is where Yahweh Shai prophesies his return. Yahweh Shai prophesied his return. Thou hast said, Nevertheless, I say unto you, hereafter. Now this proves reincarnation because how the hell, these individuals he's speaking to, this was more than 2,000 years ago, right? these individuals he's speaking to. So of course you know they died. So how will they be able to see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power coming in the clouds of heaven like Yahweh Shai said? Because they're back now. And when this happens, when Yahweh Shai comes, instantly they're going to know that it was them back in the past that persecuted him, that made fun of him, that doubted him being the Son of the living power. Instantly, they're going to know. Okay? 
it was them because once again the heavenly father is going to bring it back to their remembrance <laughs> just like we read in jude instantly he's going to bring it back to their remembrance oh it was you okay you <laughs> Instantly, the Heavenly Father is going to do that when they see how shall return. They're going to know it was them. Okay? And what kind of judgment you think they're going to get? You think they're going to get a favorable judgment? Or are they going to get a brutal judgment? There you go. Matthew 26 and 64, Yahushai said unto, the, unto him, the high priest, that same high priest is back today. Thou hast said, nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power. And Yahweh was bold to say that, man. And that proves that Yahweh was a prophet. Because the word prophet means to say before. Also proves Yahweh was a seer. A seer, S-E-E-R, is a visionary. For Yahweh to make that statement, he had to have, be able to see far into the future. A future that is coming right now. This is more than 2,000 years ago, man. So how powerful is that? And you know what? That ability, how about Shem Yahushua has given us that ability. We can see far into the future, man. Okay? <laughs> this, this, this knowledge, this truth is immensely powerful, man. There's nothing like it. Matthew 26 and 64, Yahweh Shai said unto him, Thou hast said, nevertheless, I say unto you, hereafter, shall he see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. <laughs> Those are the chariots. So that same high priest is back. Okay, and as we read on, it says, Then the high priest rent his clothes. He tore off his clothes. He was so upset. He was so pissed off. He tore his clothes, saying, He hath spoken blasphemy. What further need have we of witness? He didn't speak no blasphemy. He spoke the truth. He spoke the truth. It didn't happen back then, but it's getting ready to happen now. Okay? <laughs> what further need have we of witnesses? Behold, now ye have heard his blasphemy. What think ye? They answered and said, he is guilty of death. All those spirits are back today, man. All right? Then did they spit in his face and buffeted him and others smote him with the palms of their hands. All those spirits are back today and they're going to receive their judgment when Yahweh Shai comes. They're going to receive their judgment just like we read in the scriptures. Every day, Zephaniah 3 and 5, every morning, the Lord doth bring what? Judgment. There's a certain day coming where Yahweh Shai is going to invade this earth and he's going to bring judgment to all these individuals that were against him. As we read in Isaiah 66 and 15, the slain of the Lord shall be many. There's a scripture where Yahweh Shai said he's going to let out a roar like a travailing woman as he brings forth his judgment. He's going to be super pissed because now is the time for judgment. And that was more than 2,000 years ago. Okay. So this is an anger that's been building up or been building up for the last 2,000 years, man. <laughs> just think about that anyway i proved my point hopefully you were edified by this lesson is on to the next one